Yeah, okay. He's close. We're not going to agree to the credit for it. I'm going to be away. Mm -hmm. I knew there was you just said they can't afford yeah. to. I'm away vote. from the 11 to the 18. Well, you should impose it. I think will be right here. Call to order the Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee meeting for February 29th, 2016. And may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Sanchez? Here. 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 First, we have a motion to approve the minutes of the February 1st, 2016 Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee meeting. And I so move. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any comments, corrections, additions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. Tonight we have one item, CE1, Ordinance Number 2117, Amending Chapter 162, Zoning at Section 600, Floodplain Conservation Overlay District, Subsection 5, Definitions. This is a motion to advertise Ordinance Number 2117, Amending Chapter 162, Zoning at Section 600, Floodplain Conservation Overlay District, Subsection 5, definitions for adoption at a regularly scheduled meeting on April 14, 2016 at 7.30 p.m. And I so move. I moved and seconded. Mr. Mateo, did you want to comment briefly uh, on this? Thank you, sir. Yes, this is only to add a definition for new construction, anything that would happen after March, or excuse me, yeah, January, March 2nd of this year, um, that they would have to meet the ordinance. Anything prior to that would meet the old ordinance for the floodplain. This is another edict from that FEMA, is correct, so FEMA. to speak. And this came after the fact, am I correct? The, this addition or this revision came after everything had been advertised and sent out to the Planning Commission, so we decided to do this as a second amendment rather than sending the entire thing back for advertising. So this way the full FEMA, the full floodplain ordinance was passed prior to the March deadline. I think that makes perfect sense. Thank you, Solicitor Gallagher. Any comments from commissioners? Anybody else on staff? No comments from the audience? All right. Matters of uh, general code enforcement and land development. Commissioners? Staff? Did we get a vote on that? I'm sorry. Did I not call? That's all right. It's, uh, sorry. <laughs> Forgot to call the question. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank Motion you, carries. And then general comments in the audience hearing none how about a motion to adjourn motion second adjourn. I thank you uh, good evening we will now call to order the leap year edition of the uh, township of Abington's public works committee and can I have a roll call please here. Barron. Here. Klein. Here. Myers. Here. Rockman. Here. Our first order of business will be to approve the minutes of the February 1, 2016 Public Works Committee meeting. And can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, any additions or corrections from the committee? <coughs> Other commissioners? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 We have two items of business this evening. The first is PW1, which is a consent assessment of the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. And this is a motion to authorize the acceptance of the PADEP's consent assessment of civil penalty in lieu of litigation for sanitary sewer overflows in 2014 and 2015, including authorizing the payment not to exceed $5,800 from the contingency expense account number 02-10-200-5299, and I so move. Second. Uh, Manager Lefebvre, would you mind providing a little background on this for us? Yes, we're required to report to DEP any time our sanitary sewer system experiences a, uh, a sewage overflow, basically caused by a blockage uh, in the system that we weren't aware of, obviously, or uh, a fault of uh, a breakdown of the equipment at one of our pumping stations. In 2014 and 15, we reported five such overflows. Uh, we did repair any of the damage to our system that was related to the, uh, the overflows, the blockages. But 
DEP in turn fines the municipalities for reporting, uh, for experiencing these overflows. So it's like a catch-22. You have to report it, mm -hmm. but you when you do report it, they fine you. But if you don't report it, they fine it quite a bit more. And we've countered with a proposal that we only pay a fine of $2,500 as opposed to the 58 they, they suggested. But it's for the, before the board for consideration of the full 5,800 because the deadline for approval is uh, early April. So we can't delay to our April meeting and bring it to the board then. We need to bring it to the board for the full amount in the hope that we can compromise and agree on $2,500. And how did, the, how did we come up with the $2,500 figure? Um, Mr. Really came up based on the number of uh, overflows of $500 a piece, I believe. Yeah, $500 is kind of where DEP starts and a lot of other municipalities. So why are we double? So we, we asked for the normal average $500 fee. And I noticed that one of the incidents related to the area near Overlook Elementary School. And so, but this was not school district property. This is our system feeding into the property. Exactly. Okay. okay thank you. Uh, are there comments or questions from members of the committee? The, uh, the whole Redeemer pump station, that, that's not the same as the Meadowbrook pump station that we just did a couple of years ago. No. Separate no, this is behind the hospital. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Are there comments or questions from uh, Commissioner Myers? Thank you. Just, just a comment. Many years ago at Twin Brooks, we had a situation with our pond and DEP find, find us. Um, and we were able to negotiate that down. So I would urge you to continue to do that. I made a call just before the end of the business today and there was no answer at the gentleman's number. So I was hoping to get a approval on the 2500, but I didn't get an answer yet. So. Okay. Commissioner Thank you, Commissioner Hacker. Do we have any recourse if they don't accept the $2,500? It's a negotiation. So if they ultimately say no, we have to pay the 5800 well, the manager of the fever did talk to Stephen Pillars, the author of the letter, and he, I think, actually suggested it, that you can suggest a lower amount and negotiate it. He didn't indicate a specific amount, but he did indicate the willingness to consider a fair offer. Right. So we didn't want to come in too low, uh, and I think I'm, I'm confident we can reach a, an equitable agreement for everyone. Okay, great. Thanks. <coughs> Are there other comments or questions? Uh, Commissioner Rothman. So is it the case that they don't have to provide us with an explanation as to how they came up with that number? M mostly for kind of, future It's reference. kind of subjective on their part, from what I understand. Okay. Um, they have formulas and calculations, you know, for if it affected something. If you had a fish kill, it'd be a completely different story, because then you get a lot of other agencies involved. But this was just on the ground surface, and it soaked into the ground. So. So it's sort of no damages a cause to anything really at all. So okay, Commissioner Spiegelman. Thank you, Commissioner Hacker. Um, George, if we are able to, uh, if, if they are able to accept a negotiated lesser figure, twenty five hundred, three thousand something, uh, would that come back before the board, or would that be covered by this motion? Well, I think the motion would cover us up to fifteen hundred dollar okay. maximum. So hopefully, it'll be less than that amount. In any event, we get an answer before next Thursday. Obviously, we'll present the the exact okay. amount of, of the sum. We can amend the motion then. All right. Thank you. Other comments or questions from commissioners? Any other comments from staff? Members of the audience? Name and address for the record, please. Laura Lehman, fourteen thirty one Bryant Lane. So just to. Um, remind you of a couple of things. One I've, I've said here before, and I think most of you know at this point and maybe have seen pictures of the fact that um, as our overdevelopment causes fewer places for the water to absorb, the waters rose. They went into the, in the, the where the gas escapes from the sewer system, water went in. A lot of that had to do with the overflow in the sewer system costing millions, ultimately hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, if you add all of the uh, emergency things and everything up, and we had sewer manholes exploding and we had back up into homes and so on. And, and all of that was um, something that, you know, when you trace it back, comes to some degree from overdevelopment. The second thing to remind you of is when Mr. Wrigley first came, I asked him about, um, I knew in Cheltenham there were many of these overflow, these gas escape vents that had been plugged up. 
And I asked how many we had here, and he wasn't aware of it. Mr. Powers um, gave us a little rundown on the ones that we have here. So my question, because that causes overflow. Um, when we have that, that causes sewage to overflow and will lead to more of these. So my question is, since Mr. Wrigley's arrived, have we plugged up more of those vent holes, um, which can result in the gas backing up in people's houses, number one? And do we have, are we monitoring the situation where plugging up the vent holes might not be happening and maybe sewage backups can be anticipated? So that's my question. Are we are we monitoring mm -hmm. that? Have we done a lot more since he arrived? Mr. Wrigley, is this a question you're prepared to answer this evening, or is, yeah, is you want to follow up afterwards? What my crews have said, the the pipes that uh, the speaker's speaking about are cleanouts that were installed close to the edge of the road, and from what I understand, they were too close to the road and they were too low. So when we had a lot of storms, the water comes down the gutter of the street and overflowed the curb and went into the pipes. So they've capped and plugged all those vents that I'm aware of. And we do go out and inspect and pass by those vents to make sure that they're still there. Because some residents or some people have removed the plugs for whatever reason, so we're constantly looking to make sure that those things are capped off. Thank it, you. Is it possible they've been removed because they're getting ba gas back up, and so they check their system, and somebody says, well, your gas vent is plugged up? Is that possible? No, it's not for gas. It's for clean-out. Well, it's I, just, I, don't it's mean, just yeah, I don't mean gas. I mean the sewer, sewer gases. Yeah, it's, it's a clean-out. Yeah. It's not a vent. It's a clean-out. It's just an easy access to get into the system to clean it out. When I first learned of it, I think they told me it was the vent to vent the sewage gases. So perhaps that was just in Cheltenham and in Abington, all of them were clean up? Some people call them vents, but yeah. they're basically clean out. Okay. That's the proper use of that pipe that's there, yes. All right. So you're monitoring? Yes. I think Thank that's you. the answer. Yes, yes. because sure. it is an SSO. Yeah. Commissioner Klein. Well, I think it's also fair to say that these five events, and it says in our sheet here, you know, four of them had to do with heavy rags. Yes. The, the cloth pump. rags that are in the sewers that are creating and the fifth one had to do with a bad check valve. Nothing had to do with any any overflows of no. This was capacity. all because of capacity. These are actually just be due to mechanics. These are accidentals. Exactly. Accidental okay. things. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Myers. Uh, may I ask the manager a question? Certainly. Thank you, uh, Manager Lefevre. Did we have an event that cost us several million dollars? Not that I'm aware of. No. And not at this time, Ms. Lehman. Thank you. You've had your allotted time for this agenda item. You can follow. We're, we're it would be helpful. That's a, no. Well, we're, we're going to vote. Um, so we're ready to vote. Uh, all those in favor of PW1? Aye. Aye. PW2, this is Ordinance Number 2116, Old Welsh Road Sanitary Sewer District and Sewer Assessment. And this is a motion to advertise ordinance number 2116, establishing the Old Welsh Road Sewer District, assessing the branch of sanitary sewers on Old Welsh Road for adoption at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on April 14, 2016 at 7.30 p.m. and I so move. Second. Uh, Mr. Powers, do you care to make a comment about this? The uh, homes on Old Welsh Road, they're one of the last homes in the, the township that don't have sewer service, so we were working on a plan to service them. So this is the process to now make sure that when we go out to bid for the jobs and, and do the work, that the people can be assessed for the, the work that's being done. Thank you. Commissioner Klein, I believe this is in your ward? It is. Uh, is there anything you... No, I mean, we had, our last, we had our last meeting with the neighbors on the 26th of January. It was a second meeting. Um, there's been several emails that have gone out to the group of people that have come to these meetings. There's 28 homes that are affected. Um, there are one, two, three. There's about four separate lines that will be set up within this because of topography. Um, and I think... Um, Mike's, Mike's department and the consulting engineer in the process of putting together draft easement documentation to send out to each of the property owners as most of the properties that back up to the golf course will require utility easements on their property for the sewer line and we'll be sending those draft easement 
documents out uh, so that they can be so that they can have some advance notice. And then once the ordinance is passed, the actual easement documentation will go out. And I think we're <coughs> intending on going out to bid April first. Yeah, that's correct. On the project, so yeah. this work would then begin sometime over the summer, sometime in June. In June, assuming we have all easements and and funding and everything in place. So, and the the residents have been aware of the preliminary budget numbers and the percentage of assessed value that'll come out to them, mm -hmm. and how much that equates to. And they've been also um, given all the information about the financing ability. Um, so, I mean, I think we've kept them pretty well informed. So. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions or comments from the committee? Other commissioners? Staff? Members of the audience? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that concludes our formal agenda for this evening. We'll now open it up for any public comments related to general matters of public works. Name and address for the record, please. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. That is exactly what I've been protesting all along. Um, after I leave the podium and am not allowed to speak anymore, somebody tries to put out some comment that makes it look like I didn't know what I was talking about and those facts aren't true. Okay? So, in, in fact, while I was at the podium, if you wanted to understand something about those costs, you might have asked me where they came from, and then you could have known. So, Ms. Lane, I'll remind you, this is public comment. This is not a back and forth, right? And so the opportunity for you is to get up and make comments related to a specific agenda item or general in nature with the idea that if you have a question I that understand. requires follow-up, that I we will do so. That. And you understand that I, that I know that, too. But right. what you're doing right now is another way of interrupting residents so that no understanding flows back and forth. No, I'm trying to ensure that there's understanding that flows back and forth, and I invite you to do the same. Okay. So if you, ha if you have uh, public uh, works general comments, I invite you to make them now. So that general comment that was made where... Uh, Commissioner Myers left the impression that there has not been hundreds of millions of dollars spent on the flooding, the sewers, the, all of that, it, which is all one problem. When you have waters and creeks overflowing into the sewers, and as you know, in our sister township, and we've had this, many of the same problems here, we had black pipes that had to be built so that the sewers could be rebuilt around it, and then the storms came and took those black pipes apart while the sewage was running right through them, and it went right into the streams. We also, in our township and in their township, we have laterals, we have work of every kind. We sat down one day and added it up and got up to $60 million, and we went... <laughs> We, we literally took the figures out of the documents the, okay. and the studies and everything else. If Commissioner Myers would like to know, she might want to ask the person who actually said that, and she would be able to get an answer. Okay? Thank well. you. I, I am protesting the way that is constantly done to create so a noted. false impression. So noted, and your time is Thank up. You. Thank you for your comment. What's that, sure. Happy to respond. Okay. Um, I, I believe the speaker spoke of an event that caused that cost millions of dollars, and certainly we're all very familiar with the extensive flooding over the years that Abington has experienced, and that all of the work that we've done to mitigate that. Um, I'm not sure the breakdown between the sanitary mm -hmm. the sanitary sewers and the flooding, but um, I think that there is a differential here that's not being made. Commissioner Spiegelman. I will try to be brief, Mr. Hacker, but just for a little, historical, for a little historical perspective, this is actually something I've been uh, uh, looking into and working on a, a lot recently due to a number of things that have come up in and around Ward 11. Um, it, it is true that in Abington and in every municipality, in Pennsylvania, and one could argue most of the country, there was a, there was a time that the effects of development on on you know uh, on stormwater wasn't as well understood and documented as as it is now. It is something that every municipality deals with. 
uh, over the course of the last 40 years, as Mr. Powers uh, can, can document exhaustively, uh, it is true that a great deal of money has been spent to remediate flooding issues. This is true in every municipality around here. This is the reason that Pennsylvania DEP made every municipality pass MS4 regulations, so that when you build something that has impervious coverage, like a shed or a driveway extension or whatever, you have to offset that with a rain barrel or a rain garden, something to deal with stormwater. But the notion that somehow Abington stormwater and Abington's development and approach to development has not only ruined things for our residents, but also for those in all of our neighboring municipalities is inaccurate. That's all. Thank you. Well said. I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. Thank you. Just want to protest that there's no option to correct that. That's that's a shame. Meeting has adjourned. That's a Okay. <laughs> 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 804 Ghost Road. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>